Hey guys, it's Darwin here with my weekly Q&A to answer more of your questions. If you wanna ask a question for next week's Q&A, you can either leave it in the comment box below or send me a video question over to darwinonthetrail at yahoo.com and then next week I'll answer as many as I possibly can. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this week's first question. Does Snuggles wear her wedding ring on the trail? So, good question, Kristen. Um, Snuggles does not wear her wedding ring on the trail. In 2015 and 2016, when we were both on the Appalachian Trail, neither of us wore our wedding ring. We actually kept them at home in Indiana, um, just because, you know, we didn't want to lose them, we didn't want them to get banged up, we're sweating, we're nasty, um, so we did take them off. However, we always did want one of those silicone wedding rings, and then recently, we actually got a couple of those. So now we have completely switched to wearing the silicone wedding ring all the time and have stopped wearing our regular wedding rings. After 10 years of wearing our regular wedding rings every single day, we just decided we live a more active outdoor lifestyle. So having one of these Quelo silicone rings is definitely a better option for us. What exactly is a hiker box? And is it common to just take gear that has been left behind? So a hiker box is a box that you'll typically find at a hostel or a hotel, maybe an outfitter, sometimes even a restaurant on the trail that hikers just kind of leave stuff behind. So if a hiker is resupplying and say they buy a box of oatmeal cream pies and for some reason they only take six of them and there's eight of them, they'll leave those two other oatmeal cream pies in the hiker box so the next hiker can come by and grab that up. Hikers will also dump off gear that they're trying to unload from their pack. So anything that is in a hiker box is fair game to other hikers when they come upon it. Mainly what you'll find is some extra food, but man, sometimes you can find some really good stuff. My gravity feed system that I used in 2015 and 2016 on the AT was actually made up of things that I found in hiker boxes. So the bladder that I used, the tube that I used, and the little connector that screwed into the back of my Sawyer filter were all things that were found in a hiker box. Typically the best hiker boxes to hit up are either right in Georgia or right in Maine, right towards the beginning and the end of the trail. That's where a lot of hikers dump off gear that they're not gonna use. Uh, a lot of hikers will just bring unnecessary gear that they don't need, and that's kind of where it ends up. So if there's something that you're looking for, always check a hiker box, because the trail always provides, and chances are you'll probably find it. In your previous gear reviews, I didn't see any compass, map, or GPS device except for your phone. Have you ever gotten lost on the trail, and how did you get back on the right path? So I do not carry any type of compass. Um, a GPS, anything like that. Snuggles and I do carry an AT trail guide when we were on the AT in 15 and 16, which was the AWOL guide. Um, and that's really all you need on a trail like the Appalachian Trail. It is a very well-marked path. The only reason you really need something like the AWOL guide is to know your mileage and know your resupply points. Aside from that, it is really, really hard to get lost on that trail. Now, as far as the Arizona Trail and the Continental Divide Trail, I used an app called Guthook. Now, Guthook is a guide that it, you can put on your phone that also acts as a GPS. So if you do get off trail, which I have a couple times, you can use it to guide yourself back to the trail when you do have a GPS signal. The great thing is if you have no cell service at all, the app still works. And Guthook has been working really hard the last couple years to pretty much get an app for every major trail. So definitely check that app out. Now when I was bike packing the Arizona Trail, I did use a Garmin eTrex 20 GPS. And I mainly used that just to keep my miles logged, to know what distance I was riding and how far I had to go for the day. But aside from that device that I use whenever I do bike packing, I just use Gut Hooks app and that does me really, really well. Man, the bugs out here are bad. Researching on a good rain jacket. I recall you have an outdoor research helium. Which one is better, the Helium 2 or the Helium HD? And any good colors for the rain jacket? So, the jacket that I typically hike in and carry with me everywhere is the Outdoor Research Helium HD Jacket. You'll see it in a lot of my videos and my photos. I've taken on the AT, the AZT, the CDT. It goes everywhere with me. 
awesome jacket. It has totally stood the test of time, and I pretty much wouldn't trade that jacket for any other jacket in the world. As far as the Helium 2 jacket, not the HD version, pretty much it's the exact same jacket. It just doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the HD does. So the reason I like the HD is it has the pit vents so I can vent out my jacket whenever it's kind of warm outside but also raining because all of those jackets are kind of like big trash bags. It has Velcro cuffs so you can actually adjust the way the cuff is. On the regular one it's like an elastic cuff which I actually tend to like that a little bit better and kind of wish that mine had that. The Velcro cuffs are nice but they, they come undone a lot, especially when they're wet. So sometimes I kind of wish I had an elastic cuff. And then the other main difference is the Helium 2 does not have the patented halo brim hood. So if you're a climber or a cyclist, that hood on the HD is really nice because it was made specifically to wear a helmet with it, to where you can still get a brim if it's hardcore raining or to keep the sun out of your eyes. Either way you go, both jackets are absolutely awesome. The Helium 2 is a little bit lighter, I think coming in at six ounces, and the HD is about nine ounces. So about a three ounce difference. So if you are a weight weenie, you might look at the two, but if you like those extra features like the pit vents and stuff, I would definitely check out the HD. And I think both come in a ton of really cool colors. I'm personally an orange guy, as you can see in all my photos. I really like that guy. I'd like to stand out on the trail. I'll put a link in the description box below to both jackets if you wanna go check those out. Good luck in your search for an awesome jacket. Definitely give either the Helium HD or the Helium 2 a chance because they are amazing jackets. You've mentioned stealth camping many times. But what exactly does that mean? So stealth camping is whenever you're out on a trail like the AT, the PCT, the CDT, and you don't want to camp at a designated campsite or a shelter like on the AT, so you stealth camp. It's pretty much making your own camp wherever you see fit. Now obviously you should always follow the leave no trace principles whenever you are building a camp. Make sure you're not killing any vegetation or anything, but stealth camping is simply just making your own camp. So typically on the AT, when Snuggles and I would come up to a shelter and see a ton of hikers there, we would usually hike like half a mile or a mile past that shelter and make a stealth camp. Just because we wanted a little bit of peace and quiet, maybe there was kind of like a party crowd, at the shelter and we didn't wanna be around that for the night, so we would make a stealth camp. Now out on trails like the Continental Divide Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail, it's nothing but stealth camping. There's not really any designated campsites anywhere, maybe a handful, but really not like the AT where you have shelters that are built and campsites that are built specifically for hikers. So on the PCT and the CDT, it's kind of free range and you're stealth camping every night which is pretty cool because you can kind of make your own campsite wherever you want to. But again, if you are setting up a stealth campsite, make sure you always follow the leave no trace principles. Make sure you're not killing vegetation. Don't be building a fire ring where it shouldn't be. And if you are doing a stealth camp, make sure you clean up that area before you leave and put it back to its natural state because we definitely have to protect our trails. Trail days looks interesting. Do you know of something similar on the west side of the country? It would be great to meet with all the vendors in one spot. So trail days is absolutely awesome, especially if you are a gear geek. So trail days in Damascus, Virginia is pretty much this huge hiker fest. It's kind of like hiker Woodstock. So tons of hikers show up from either the current year of hiking or from past years. They have music, they have food, and obviously they have the vendors. So all of the gear companies from the major brands like Osprey and Granite Gear to the smaller cottage companies like Z-Packs and Hyperlite Mountain Gear are all out there showing off their gear, giving away gear, making repairs. It is a really, really cool place if you're a gear geek like me, so definitely check that out. As far as a trail days that's on the west side of the country, yeah, there's actually two. There's PCT trail days, which is August 18th through the 20th, like right outside of Portland, Oregon, in a place called Cascade Locks, and it's pretty much the same thing. All the vendors come out. I know Z-Packs will be there this year. I would really, really love to get out there, but I'm not gonna be able to this year, which is kind of a bummer. And then you have CDT trail days, which is April 28th through the 30th in Silver City, New Mexico. Now, whenever I was doing my section hike of the Continental Divide Trail, I actually came through Silver City about a week before trail day. So 
I missed out on that one too. That one is just getting started, so much smaller, but it's growing in popularity as the CDT grows in hikers every year. But yeah, if you get a chance, definitely check out one of those trail days, get some free swag, meet some of those companies, be around like-minded hikers, get some stuff repaired, and have an awesome time. Trail days rules. So the advice that I would have for any hiker that's thinking about going to trail days that is maybe doing a through hike is wait until you get off the trail. So in 2015, Snuggles and I went back to trail days during our through hike and we were already past Damascus, Virginia. So it was kind of a pain in the ass. We had to get off the trail, get a ride back to trail days. We were off the trail for about eight days. So there was a whole week where we missed hiking. Some of the people we were hiking with went ahead and went forward. So we weren't able to catch up with them. And the whole time we were at trail days, we'd all we were thinking about was hiking and how we were missing out on miles and missing out on things. So it kind of skewed that whole trail days experience. So my advice to you is if you're thinking about going, don't go during a through hike. Make sure you go either a year before or the year after, especially the year after. It's really nice to go back and reconnect with a lot of hikers that maybe you hiked with the year that you hiked. In 2019, Snuggles and I will be heading back out to Virginia to go to Trail Days in Damascus, and hopefully we'll meet up with some of the hikers and have a reunion with the people that we hiked with in 15 and in 16. So again, definitely check out a Trail Days. It is a really good time. All right, guys, last question of the week. Here's my pressing of all pressing questions. How often do through hikers actually take a dump in the woods, or do they wait until they get to a shelter to use the head there? Plus, for those that actually take a dump in the woods, how many actually dig a cat hole first, and how often have you seen toilet paper floating around on or near the trail? So, just me, that is an awesome question. Here's why. Last week, I did a video called Things That You Should Leave at Home During a Through Hike, and in that video, I mentioned leaving a trowel home. Now, it got a lot of dislikes and controversy, people throwing their arms up, saying that I was trying to tell hikers to not dig a cat hole, and that's not true. I simply think you should leave a trowel at home because I personally use my trekking pole or a tent stake, or sometimes if the ground is loose enough, even one of my shoes to dig a hole. But I always dig a six inch hole. If you're a new hiker and you don't think that you can dig a six inch hole without a trowel, definitely take a trowel. You should always be practicing leave no trace policies. So always make sure you dig that hole before you take that dump. As far as through hikers taking a dump in the woods, yeah, there's tons of hikers that take a dump in the woods. I'm kind of a one dump a day guy. So either I do my business whenever I first wake up in the morning at a shelter, so I'll use a privy, or sometimes it might even be an hour into my hike. And then yeah, I definitely get off the trail, leave my pack on the trail, walk about 200 feet off the trail, dig my cat hole however I have to do it, whether it's a stick, a trekking pole, a stake, or even if I want to carry a trowel and take my dump, cover it up, and make sure there is no trace that I was there. Because the last thing that somebody wants to do is walk up on your big, massive pile of crap. So you should always bury that. As far as other hikers doing that, I hope other hikers are doing that. There are a handful of times where I've seen little wads of toilet paper off in the distance. But even in that case, sometimes it could be because somebody took a pee and just kind of left a little bit of toilet paper behind or blew their nose. So I've never actually seen like a big pile of crap, if that's what you're asking. But yes, I hope that all hikers are digging that six inch hole because it's super important to bury that stuff. Number one, leave no trace. You know, we, we don't need to litter the trail with toilet paper and crap. And two, you have things like norovirus that are pretty much started because of hikers taking a poop, not washing their hands, or someone being near someone else's feces. So it's pretty gross, but as an answer to the age old question, does a hiker shit in the woods? Yeah. All right guys, so if you wanna leave a question for next week's Q&A, you can either leave it in the comment box below or send me a video question over to Darwin on the trail at yahoo.com and then next week I'll answer as many as I possibly can. If you haven't got a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I'm posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout our week, plus some pictures of some past hikes. So go check those out if you haven't already. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.